to the end times. Religious groups and free speech advocates are banding together to fight a United Nations resolution they say is used to spread Sharia law to the Western world and to intimidate anyone who criticizes Islam. This non-binding resolution number 62-145, which was originally adopted back in 2007, says it notes the deep concern, the intensification of campaign of defamation of religions and the ethnic and religious profiling of Muslim minorities in the aftermath of September 2001. In other words, the OIC, which stands for the Organization of Islamic Conference, along with the Muslims, feel that they are wrongfully being discriminated upon since the Muslim terrorist attack of the World Trade Center back in September 11 of 2001. According to them, it stresses the need to combat defamation of all religions and incitement to religious hatred against Islam, Muslims, and all the other religions in particular. Although the defamation resolutions state that they protect religions, plural, the only religion that is specifically mentioned is Islam and, of course, the Muslims. Aside from Islam, the resolution does not specify which religions are deserving of protection or explain how or by whom this would be determined. The real truth is that this resolution is a dangerous threat to freedom of speech everywhere because it is geared to protecting the Muslims only and not other religions, especially Christianity. Under these laws, criminal charges can be levied against individuals for defaming, denigrating, insulting, offending, disparaging, and blaspheming Islam, many times resulting in gross human rights violations. Countries with a state religion are the most punitive users of blasphemy laws, which can be used to victimize non-members of and dissident members of the ruling sect or cult. In this case, we're referring to Islam. In Islam, the Quran or the Hadith do not speak about blasphemy. There's no mention of blasphemy anywhere in the Quran or the Hadith. Jurists created this offense and made it part of Sharia law to benefit themselves. According to Sharia, the penalties for blasphemy can include fines, imprisonment, flogging, which is beating, amputation, crucifixion, hanging, or even beheading. Many clerics may call for a killing of an alleged blasphemer by issuing what they call a fatwa. These anti-blasphemy measures call on states to limit religiously offensive language or speech. In order for the free practice of religion to function, the freedom to agree or disagree over faith must exist. Otherwise, it is not a free freedom of religion. The United States under Barack Hussein Obama recently joined the United Nations Human Rights Council, which for years has been the voice for countries that for many, many years have been human rights violators and abusers. And unfortunately, the President of the United States is a member of that organization. The U.S. government mentioned in Geneva, in a statement, told the U.N. Human Rights Council that defamation-related laws have been abused by governments and used to restrict human rights around the world. Critics give some recent news events as examples of how the UN blasphemy law resolution has emboldened Islamic authorities and threatened the West. For example, on October the 3rd, in Great Britain, three men were charged for plotting to kill the publisher of the novel titled The Jewel of Medina, which gives an account of the Prophet Muhammad and his nine-year-old child bride. This is a child that Muhammad took for a bride at the tender age of nine years old. Foxnews.com reported U.S. publisher Random House Incorporated was going to release the book, but it stopped from hitting the bookstores shelves after it claimed that credible and unrelated sources said the book could incite violence by a radical segment. In other words, Random House stopped its release because plain fear of an uproar from Muslims. This is a tactic used by Muslims to achieve what they want and hide the truth from the public. Unfortunately, guess what? It's working. Here's another incident. A British teacher was sentenced to 15 days in jail in Sudan 
for offending Islam by allowing students to name the class teddy bear Muhammad in November of 2007. Still another incident, in February of 2007, in Egypt, an internet blogger was sentenced to four years in prison for writing a post that criticized Islam. And still another incident, in 2004, Dutch filmmaker Theo van Gogh was murdered after the release of his documentary showing the abuse of Muslim women. Fortunately, this law is still non-binding, but given time and insistence, it may become permanent and binding, which may become a great danger to all of us. We as Christians and free people of the world must pray and contact your senator and let him know how you feel about blasphemy laws and Sharia law here in America. If you would like further information on this and other end time related topics, please feel free to visit my website at endtimes.com. Dot us dot com. Again, that's endtimes.us.com. And while you're there, pick up a copy of my book titled, Welcome to the End Times. May God bless you, and until next time, God willing. Thank you.